clinical features wise you need to remember two things one the story of a patient of abpa is characterized by frequent flare ups and baseline continued activity so during flare ups mostly it presents in the form of difficulty to treat underlying condition difficulty to treat underlying condition now what do i mean by that okay if you are talking about an asthmatic right if you are talking about an asthmatic who was generally well controlled with the a combination of ics plus formoterol or any other uh, long acting beta agonist now the control is lost once the allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis starts occurring and after that the same medications are unable to control it keeps requiring the escalating doses of medications and eventually land up with the need for oral corticosteroids that's the usual story of a patient of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis in an asthmatic ocs required in case of bronchial asthma required in bronchial asthma similarly patients of cystic fibrosis frequent flare ups and difficulty to control the underlying condition that's how that cystic fibrosis patient is going to present right okay apart from that the persistent baseline activity of the hypersensitivity reaction right when ig is produced in large number and when there is uh, eosinophilic inflammation right the end result of that is increased mucus production and this increased mucus production leads to clogging of the airway clogging of the airway uh, mainly the bronchioles and this can also lead to development of bronchiectasis right this can lead to development of bronchiectasis it can also lead to atelectasis of the the lung segments which are not ventilated because of the blockage of the airway right so bronchiectasis is one more manifestation that you need to keep in mind so if you see an asthmatic who is not well controlled and having some bronchiectasis that may be a pointer towards the allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis okay and when you talk about bronchiectasis you should also know what is the nature of bronchiectasis and what are the segments of the lung that are affected so bronchiectasis here is mostly cylindrical we are mostly talking about cylindrical or what is called as tubular bronchiectasis cylindrical bronchiectasis it is mostly proximal or central more than peripheral so you don't see these bronchiectatic changes occurring towards the the chest wall it is more towards the hilum right proximal more than peripheral proximal more than peripheral or you can call these as central bronchiectasis right and it is usually upper lobe predominant upper lobe predominant so upper lobe predominant towards the hilum that that is the bronchiectasis we are seeing right and you might have the radiological evidence of bronchiectasis and the presence of bronchiectasis may also be associated with copious expectoration and frequent frequent infectious exacerbations infectious exacerbations so that's the usual story of the patient right so please remember most important thing is when the underlying disease like asthma is becoming increasingly difficult to control we should keep allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis also as one of the important differential diagnoses